And the balsam tucked away on the bank side here. It's part of the railway embankment. This is the dreaded stuff. And uh, you'll hear the argument from beekeepers that oh, it's a good source of nectar for the bees. Yeah, well, my re retort to that is I'd rather see our native bees spending their time and energy, valuable as it is, on pollinating our native wildflowers rather than this invasive thug. Um, related to the busy Lizzie and Patians family. Uh, which is more apparent in the, the leaf and the stem structure than the, the flowers themselves. The flowers are a bit more reminiscent of Andorhinum or Snapdragon. Um, and the seed pods are familiar with kids when you squeeze them they pop and scatter their seeds up to about three meters. So in order to get rid of this effectively you really at this stage you would need to Bend that gently over into a bin bag, snap that off, and, uh, and capture all the potential seeds in a bag. Uh, and then with the rest of the plant, and I'll demonstrate with one that's not so. Let me take the seed right off that. Uh, too much happening. So you've got a plant there, those seed pods aren't very ripe, they're very shallow rooted. I'll just demonstrate by pulling that out of the ground. There's hardly any root system at all there. Oops. Shake the compost off. So not much of a root system. But it's amazing these hollow stems are thick with water. And they carry a lot of moisture. So even pulling it out and just chucking it on the ground like that, there's still enough moisture in that stem to supply those seeds, seed pods, with enough energy to actually ripen and disperse. So what you've got to do is crush the stem the full length up to expel all that water. What I would generally do as well is just strip off all the leaves and flowers so it can't photosynthesize, it can't convert any energy from the sun. And you're squashing all that. And the other thing is, if you don't do that, but each of these leaf... Oh, I'm doing this one-handed. Each of these leaf nodes here, where the, the sort of little leaf stems come out from the stalk, there are epicormic or dormant root buds there. So if you just pulled that out and dropped it on the ground, it's got enough energy to send out a few roots into anywhere that it's in contact with the ground so it would start to regenerate very quickly these apparently if you size them just above the or below the first node so if you if you cut the stems between the roots and that first node it won't regenerate so that's one potential way of controlling them. Uh, but you would still, you know, you'd still need to get the stems that you've cut um, and crush them. And, and you can hang them in a tree or uh, throw them over some surrounding vegetation like nettles and things. They often grow in the same conditions as nettles. There's a smaller one there growing. Oh, and that's often what you find. You think you've got a small plant and what's happened is it's just collapsed onto the ground and look there's a little, as I've said, a little root bud coming away there, a little red bud because that's been in contact with the ground and there's even signs of little yeah, they'd come away again so that one would definitely take root, there's the second see there's the original roots down there that first node Two roots coming out there, second node where it's been bent and on the ground, roots coming out there, so really tenacious, it's desperate to survive and reproduce, which is what makes them such a nightmare. And they very, very quickly take over an area and become a problem. Now these have been tackled, this this whole bank side, if I look behind us here, was covered in balsam a couple of years ago. 
but the owners of the land have been gradually battling away at it and they've reduced the area that the balsam covers. It's still over the fence, but that's not their land. But, legally, because of the status of these plants, the owners of that land, which I'm guessing will be the railway folk, are legally bound not to allow invasive weeds to spread onto neighbouring land. So, you could actually take them to court. Poor, I've just caught a whiff of, uh, must be a septic tank or something down here. <coughs> that was fairly unpleasant. Um, so that balsam should be controlled by whoever owns that land, but, you know, cutbacks, staff reductions, that sort of thing. Um, might be difficult for some organisations to come and tackle this, but it's it's across the country on a massive scale and it's becoming a bigger and bigger problem. Because you can see how big it gets and it just cuts out all the light and chokes out any competition that it has. The only thing that sort of battles against it and puts up with it is, uh, is things like nettles. As I say, you often find nettles, bracken and balsam doing well together but they're all quite tough, invasive plants in their own right. But, uh, and the other thing about balsam is you can always tell where it is because it has a distinctive smell to it. Not a particularly attractive one either. So a quick eye dent lesson on the roots that uh, form from the, the nodes and the stem. That's the main root ball at the base of the stem. Again, very shallow, easy to pull out. The stem itself, quite distinct rhubarb-like almost. The leaves you'll note are very finely serrated, again like a busy lizzy leaf. And then the flowers vary in colour. You can get this deep sort of uh, striking scarlety pink, more maroony, pale pink, and also this pure white flowers as well. So fairly varied, but the structure is the same.